Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of MSBA's Open Session Program. And during this program, we're going to be looking ahead to the 2021 regular session of the Missouri General Assembly coming up in January. And joining us to discuss the legislative session is our Associate Executive Director for Advocacy, Mike Reed. And Mike, thanks a lot for being with us. Well, it's good to be here and, and have everyone joining us today. All right, Mike, uh, the General Assembly, of course, will convene for its regular session in January. First of all, let's talk about the uh, election and uh, the makeup of the General Assembly heading into this session. And really, the election did not change the makeup very much, did it? No, the, the General Assembly is made up uh, essentially just as it was at the end of last, uh, the last session. Uh, the Republican Party has a large majority, a supermajority in both the House and the Senate. Um, and so it, it is very much, very much like last time, last year, last session. And uh, what about the, the chairs of the key committees that we follow, Mike? Are there any changes there? I, the, the Senate will, will not change its committee chairman. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be Senator O'Loughlin, I'm sure. And I believe the House will, will keep uh, Chuck Basie as chair of the Education Committee. The, the House does change its committee chairman differently than the Senate, um, but I believe we'll have the same same group. The, uh, the new speaker of the Missouri House is Representative Escovo, uh, and I believe that he will keep uh, many of the, the chairs that have, had, that have been there in the past. And of course, Mike, the legislature will be convening, uh, we presume, uh, during the, the continuing outbreak of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, can you, uh, how will they operate? I mean, do, does anyone know at this point how things are going to go as far as the procedure of the General Assembly? No one really knows. However, in discussion with uh, members of the House and the Senate, they believe that it's going to run just as it always has in the past with committee hearings uh, on uh, Monday afternoon, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, discussion as it is. I believe what's going to happen is that there still will be uh, a, a number of uh, restrictions on people coming in to the Capitol. Uh, that'll be much more locked down than it has in the past. I think that a, num a number of representatives and senators will also be very careful on the, on meeting people in their office. Uh, but as far as the whole work of the General Assembly, I think it's going to be just, uh, they're going to try to make it just as normal as possible. It'd be interesting to see if we can carry on that, in fact, with this virus, but we'll see what happens. All right, Mike, let's talk about some of the issues that may be considered before the General Assembly. And one of those issues that we always care about and we've seen uh, raised for several years now uh, relates to vouchers, tuition tax credits, education savings accounts, whatever you might want to call them. Will we see that sort of issue come back again this year? Yes, I believe we will see that issue coming back this year again. Uh, it's been uh, the people who have pushed it were reelected. That's a very... Uh, dear to their hearts. Uh, there have been some opinions of the U.S. Supreme Court concerning that question. I believe we'll look for vouchers to come about. A number of people have been pushing for vouchers and, and some sort of tuition tax credits in light of, of what has happened with the coronavirus and schools not uh, meeting online and, and meeting virtually. Uh, there has been ideas floated that because of the virtual education, uh, parents should be able to uh, receive some sort of payments to, to help for uh, payment of, of outside people for, for tu tutoring or other situations. I, and I believe this is going to just be another outgrowth of that. And, and I think we'll see a, a big push for that this year. And of course, Mike, that's an issue that we uh, strongly oppose at uh, MSBA, providing uh, taxpayer subsidy, whatever form that might take to private schools. Um, and the other interesting thing about that is coming at a time when there's a question on where the money is in the budget, uh, and we might as well hit that question right now, there's a real big question on how the budget's going to come through. This year, the tax we had two tax dates uh, because of last year the income tax was not paid on April the 15th; it was paid on July 15th. So, so we have uh, more money coming in. Uh, we have the July 15th payment from last year and next year will be the April 15th payment. So we'll have a lot more money coming in at the top end, which will then spur, it looks like, some tax uh, credits and some tax rebates, which will then 
foster probably some big holes in the budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, uh, the budget outlook, Mike, uh, somewhat uncertain, I guess. Uh, as you said, revenue coming in at the moment, but in the, you know, in the long term, uh, does the state still have a revenue problem? It's in the long term, the state's going to have a revenue problem, it looks like. Uh, and discussing it with, with several uh, experts on this, they believe that there may be as much of a shortfall as $500 million, which is a tremendous amount of money uh, and coming in. And, and that will have to be made up someplace. One of those uh, ideas being uh, floated to perhaps generate some additional state revenue is the collection of internet sales tax. People have been discussing that for a while. Any kind of momentum for that th during the coming session, do you think? Well, we would hope so. Uh, there was some momentum at the end of last session and perhaps had the, the session not been so messed up and, and on again, off again, that there probably was a chance to get something passed. I think, again, we will look very, very closely at that. And, and it's called, as we all call it, the Wayfair fix, uh, internet sales tax. And I believe that the people will see that that's, it's appropriate to, to tax internet sales, especially in light of the fact that I believe during this Christmas season, there'll be an even more of a use of, of internet sales and a tremendous amount of sales coming through that way, much of which is not taxed. And so I believe that, that there will be a push and there is a possibility we can get that worked out this year. Mm -hmm. Another issue that we have been concerned about for a few years now, Mike, that uh, I would think would be coming back, and that is charter school expansion in the state. And of course, right now we have charter schools only in St. Louis and Kansas City, but there have certainly been bills the past few sessions to expand charters uh, elsewhere in Missouri. Are we going to see that again? We will see that again. We will see charter school expansion again. Um, question is where? Probably we will see the same bill that has passed as they've tried to pass in the past in, in previous years, uh, putting charter schools in the larger counties in St. Charles County, in uh, the areas around St. Louis, uh, areas around Kansas City, Green, Boone, uh, Cape Girardeau, Jeff or Cole, and where there's a, a higher population. Uh, but we will see an ex a big push for the expansion of charter schools. Uh, Again, and we will also see, I think, an expansion of charter schools, of virtual charter schools. There's a lot of question on, on virtual schools and, and how virtual schools operate. And since we, many districts have had to go virtual, um, and some of them have used outside providers, some of you have used uh, internal virtual education. Uh, the virtual education, there's a, some push for an expansion of virtual education charter schools. So um, I think we'll see that. Mm -hmm. uh, pushed very hard. And Mike, our concern with uh, charter schools as they exist in Missouri right now really relates to accountability, that we have charters that use public money and yet they are not held to the same accountability standards as our traditional public schools are. That, that is exactly right. We, uh, we, we want, if you're using public money, uh, you should meet the same standards as, as, as other public schools. You call yourself a public school and you are because you take public money then you need to meet those same standards. That's where we are. We believe that we could go toe to toe with charter schools. Everybody should be on the same level playing field and everybody should meet the same standards. Uh, and and uh, we believe that that's, that's where it should go. Another issue that has come up in recent sessions, Mike, has been uh, school board elections and uh, the idea of moving school board election uh, date from uh, April where it's been for many, many years uh, to the general November general election date, something that we're concerned about. Do you think that'll come back this year? Yes, it's going to come back this year. There's going to be a big push for that. There are going to be two pushes for, for school boards. One is the movement of, of school board election from, from April to November. Uh, there are several problems with that. Part of the problem is going to turn it politically. The other problem is that there is not a, an election every November. Uh, there's a general election every other November, and so it would would throw off the election of school board members. So we would elect four members one time and two members or three members the next time. Uh, and so it's a it, it could be it could be very problematic. Also, there's a push uh, to have school boards run in districts, so it would divide up many school districts 
uh, into subdistricts and have people run in subdistricts? And that's a question that every board should think about uh, of how that would affect them. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike. And during this time before the session officially convenes in January, this is a good time for school board members to be in contact with their legislators, isn't it? It is. It's an excellent time. And, and we have a number of new elected officials, a number of new members of the House of Representatives, 30 some odd. Uh, make sure that you go out and meet those people, uh, have them into a school board meeting, either in person or virtually, have them uh, understand how the, your district works. Uh, make sure that you become friends with them, talk to them uh, so you can have this relationship because they represent you and you and they also represent the same group of people. You're all elected officials and representing people and representing children. Uh, we got to do what's best for the kids. And one of the best things that's best for the kids is to know who your representative is, your senator, who they are, and have a re relationship with them. And of course, Mike, during the legislative session, we will be keeping our school board members uh, informed uh, in various ways, including our weekly legislative voice newsletter and uh, critical issue alerts and other things. And so uh, it's important for school board members to uh, keep up to date on what's going on in Jefferson City and uh, be willing to contact their legislators when needed on when some of these issues come up. Isn't that important? That's extremely important. Uh, we, we try to let people know what's going on all the time. Also, if you have questions, please feel free to call us at any time and uh, we'll get back with you and discuss what's happening here in Jefferson City and how your representative is, is working with us and various ideas about uh, for, for new pieces of legislation. All right, Mike Reed, our Chief Lobbyist and Associate Executive Director for Advocacy, thanks very much for joining us, and we look forward to hearing from you again as we approach the 2021 legislative session convening in January. Mike, thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you. And we thank you for being with us on this edition of MSBA's Open Session.